let's take a look at another example. So, so far we saw that we have an example that we cannot construct a triangle. Now, I'm going to give you these information. I'm going to tell you, hey, can we construct a triangle with the following information? Well, I'm going to give you A to be equals to 12. B is 31. Angle A is 20.5 degrees. A, very good. So what do we have here? We have a, the law of signs. So I have 12 divided by sine of 20.5 degrees, which is equal to B, 31, divided by sine of B, which is equal to C, over sine of angle C. Well, let's start. Take these two fractions and set them equal to each other. Then, after finding B, the sum of these angles must be equal to 180 degrees, and we can easily find C, and then move on to calculate the length C. So sine of angle B is equal to 31 times sine of 20.5 degrees divided by 12. If we do the calculation, this guy is approximately 0.990, okay? So far, so good. Well, what do we have here? We found sine of B, which is 0.90. Am I right? What is B? How do we calculate B? We're looking for an angle such that the sine of that angle is this number here. So your B is equal to inverse sine of 0.90. You remember that when you're using inverse function, arc sine or sine inverse, this guy has two values. B can be approximately 64.8 or it can be 115.2 degrees. Go back to your sine function. Let us go to Desmos, take a look at the sign. What are we looking for? Take a look at Desmos. If you do the visualization on one period, what do we have? Let's take a look at this most. Suppose we graph sine function, sine of x. The y value of sine is point, point 0.9. So remember that this is 1.9 around here. We're looking for the angle. We're looking for the angle on the horizontal line that its y value is 0 0.90, 0 0.90. You can just graph this as well. You can say that, hey, y is equal to 0 0.90 and see the intersection with the graph of the sign at two points, all right? One of them is here, the other guy is here, but we're converting them into angles. Okay, let's see. We have two possible angles. Well, for each one of these, we have to do the calculations. Very good. So if your angle B is 64.8 degrees, you can find a C angle. You can compute C. If your B is 115.2 degrees, you have another C. Why is that? Because A plus B plus C is equal to 180 degrees. So if C is different each time, 
If B is still conditional, you're going to get different C values. So what is my A? A is 20.5 plus B, 64.8 plus C, 180 degrees. But in the second scenario, if my B is 115.2 degrees, I have 20.5 for my A plus B is 115.2 plus C is missing, which is equal to 180 degrees. Very good. So take a look at this. If my B is equal to 64.8, then my C, let me write my C here. My C becomes, let me check, 94.7, 94.7 degrees. However, if C is computed from the second equation, your C is 44.3. 44.3. Okay, what does it tell me? It tells me, hey, instead of having just one triangle, I end up with two triangles. This is my first triangle, triangle A, and this is my second triangle, triangle B. Okay, very good. So far, it computed my missing angle C. Now I need to find the side C. Well, here you can say that C, length C, is equal to A, which is 12, times sine C, which is 94.7, divided by sine of 20.5. This way, your length C is going to be about 34.15. However, if I use B to be 115.2 degrees, my angle C is going to be different. So length C is going to be 12 times sine of 44.3, sine of 44.3, divided by sine of 20.5. In this case, the length becomes 23.93. And as you can see, you end up having two triangles. So we have two triangles. In previous example, we had no triangle. In this example, we have two triangles.